Let's start with an explanation of dynamic range, since it's pretty likely that it'll be easier to understand what a lot of it is if you know what it is in the first place. Dynamic range is, much like a contrast ratio, a measurement of the difference between the brightest part of an image and the darkest. Unlike contrast ratios, which use linear numbers to represent the luminance of the brightest whites and darkest blacks in an easy way that anyone can understand, dynamic range is measured in f-stops, each of which represents this difference in power of two. Okay, so let's do an example. A pocket camera rated at six f-stops of dynamic range can correctly capture an image that has bright spots that are 64 times brighter than the darkest shadows. This, according to Wikipedia anyway, is about what our eyes could perceive if they operated like a still camera and just took snapshots as we went about our business. But they don't. Instead, when we look around, our eyes are adjusting constantly to achieve an estimated maximum dynamic range of as much as 20 stops. To put that in perspective, the best cinema grade digital cameras top out in the neighborhood of 14 to 16 stops of dynamic range today. And while that allows their operators to capture beautiful images that have a mixture of bright light and deep shadows without clipping or losing so much detail that all the camera captures in a given region is complete blackness or blown out pure white, it would appear that to achieve achieve what the eye can, more is basically better, and we've still got a lot of work to do, right? Enter HDR, or High Dynamic Range Imaging. This technique attempts to make the image on your phone or camera look more true to life by revealing more details in the shadowy areas of an image and in blown out bright areas by exposing the image multiple times to compensate for the limited dynamic range of your capture equipment. It's not a new technique by any means, and basically all HDR implementations work in pretty Pretty much the same way. The camera records an image multiple times in rapid succession at varying exposure or brightness levels, then software techniques are either automatically or manually applied to blend them together into one image, borrowing the details in the shadows from the brightest image and the details in the bright light from the darkest one and putting them all together in an attempt to recreate what the eye would see if you were just looking around normally at the scene that you're trying to capture. In theory, it's great, and there are certainly situations where an experienced DSLR user with a tripod and a very still subject can tastefully use HDR to produce very pleasing images, but there are some challenges. Number one is motion. A moving subject will not look good with HDR because whether you're capturing three images the way most smartphones do, or whether you're capturing 20 plus the way a manual DSLR user might, someone moving through the shot or even something as subtle as leaves blowing in the wind will usually completely ruin the image. Number two is scenes with vivid colors or interesting looking contrast. While HDR post-processing may bring more color into a dull image, it can have the opposite effect in an image where you've already got vibrant color and of course if you're looking for like artful high or low contrast by its very nature it will reduce that effect. In fact the situations where HDR might be legitimately useful are pretty few and far between. A backlit skier in the shadow of a tree with a beautiful mountaintop brightly lit landscape behind her might be better captured with HDR but this is mostly only true if the objective of taking the image is to get a more practical image where you can see the details in the skier's face as well as the landscape because often HDR counterintuitively ends up looking surreal rather than more natural. But I think there's a place for that. While many purists may disagree with the use of HDR entirely, this is the kind of argument that I often have with my production crew where they might want a super sexy shallow depth of field shot on a product and I might just want to close the aperture, boost the gain to high hell and produce an image that allows the viewer to look at any part of it and get a clear idea of what the heck they're looking at as opposed to creating something that is better art or more natural looking. Speaking of better art and more naturally looking, what in the heck were those? You may have noticed some absolutely stunning examples of HDR HDR landscapes just there, all of which were downloaded from Shutterstock.com using our account, which we love because of how much easier it's made finding graphics and images for use in fast as possible. Shutterstock.com has over 35 million stock images to choose from, all the way from simple little vector graphics that we use to illustrate the points that we're making, to shots of models depicting emotions that we want 
to express to beautiful HDR images like the ones that you just saw. And the best thing about it is that it's hassle-free. You grab images a la carte or in a monthly subscription bundle like us, and you never think about royalties or usage rights again. They've got plans designed for small groups like us all the way up to enterprise-grade plans suitable for broadcast television, and it's absolutely free to try. Head over to the website and use their incredibly powerful search tool to start browsing their entire image library and pick the ones you want. Just make sure when it's time to check out, you use offer code TECHQUICKIE514 so you can save 20% and so they'll know who sent you. Thanks Shutterstock for sponsoring today's episode. Thanks to you, the viewer, for watching. I'd also love to hear your comments on this topic. Please mash those like and share buttons if you enjoyed the video and hit that dislike button at least twice for each moment that bored you. It helps us improve. Leave a comment on whether you use HDR, what you use it for, and whether you believe in the legitimacy of it as a, as a piece of, you know, practical photo taking or video capture, you know, technique that you keep in your arsenal and that all got awkward really fast. Post requests for future tech quickie topics to the comments or on the linustechtips.com forum. And finally, if you haven't already, click subscribe so you don't miss any of the awesome fastest possible episodes we're going to keep making just like this one. Or if you hated this one, then don't worry, they'll be different. Please subscribe.